Welcome to Audiobook da Morgan. Today's reading is Uts, chapter 44. But before we start, please subscribe on my channel and press the button to activate notifications. Chapter 44 Uts by Bruce Chatwin. I am now in a position to add to my account of Utsi's funeral. Between the moment of death and the appearance of the undertaker, Marta had obliterated the porcelain shells with draperies of black material. She called Orlick from the museum and the two sat visual until the coffin was taken away. Eda Krasova, meanwhile, conducted her own dirge on the floor below. Women from all over Prague, from Brun, from Bratislava, women who had detested each other on the operatic stage and as those rivals for Utsi's affection, were now united in the hatred of Marta for thwarting them their final glimpse of the moustache. They screamed, they hissed, they banged on the door. She was deaf to their entreaties. On the eve of the entombment, she posted Orlick to guard her exit and entrance and held a conference on the stairwell in which she informed the grieving women of the arrangements for the next day. With inspired malice, she told them the service would be held in the church of St. Jacob instead of St. Sigismund, the burial at the Vishraj Cemetery instead of the Vion Randi, and at breakfast at the Hotel Bristol, to which my beloved husband bade you all attend, would begin at 9.45 instead of 9.15. As a result, there were two more hard Tatra limousines shuttling back and forth across Prague in the early hours of that bitter morning, one containing a group of retired operatic divas, the other crammed with officials from the Rudolfine Museum. These two parties coincided at the entrance to the hotel dining room at the moment when the widow Utz, having raised her toque glass to the bear, to the bear, was making a remorseless exit. Taking a leatherette bag into the ladies' lavatory, she changed out of black into a suit of brown wool jersey. She took a taxi to the central station, a train to Chetspudzovsvich, and went to stay with her sister, who still lived in their native village.